Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging project. Visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You know what time it is. It's time for question and answers. If you've got a question, you can submit it to us at gardentalkradio at gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, or you can give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW, toll-free, coast-to-coast, uh, create a nice orderly fashion line, uh, talk among yourselves, and we'll get to your question as it comes up. First question, Holly, is about planting some tulips. Uh, it is October now and... Turnips. Tur- oh, turnips. I, it is October now and I just cleared a bunch of weeds and shrubs and trees. Uh, can I plant turnips as a cover crop now or is it too late here in Zone 5B? Zone 5B is uh, many different places across the country. Uh, so can they do such? Can they use now cover crops are used for a variety of different ways, correct, Holly? Yeah, a lot of times cover crops, especially a root crop, helps kind of loosen the soil. Opens up, creates opens cavities, up, yeah, right? Cre- creates cavities. Um we actually tried this with those daikon radishes. Right. Um but you many, many years ago before we were more educated on the procedure. Right. So um I th- I think it's too too late. Well, no, you can. Well, here's the thing. You can plant these as late as November, uh, as late as November, and it will still be a good cover crop, assuming that the ground is not frozen. You've got to have two or three weeks, you know, give or take a little bit of some good soil you know, moisture as well as not being frozen. And these things will uh, grow without any issues. So keep that in mind. You want to obviously plant these just like garlic. We can still plant garlic from Big Elk Garlic Farm up to this time that the the ground is frozen. However, it's best if we can get in the ground about 30 days before the ground freezes. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago on how to do such uh, plant successful garlic in many parts of the country. Uh, let's see here. Another question, Holly. Uh, if I may ask a question about a previous topic, I think it was you that suggested not throwing away old seeds. I will not be using them, but putting them out for birds. Are there any seeds that birds and chipmunks and or squirrels should not have? Well, number one, uh, you're doing a very nice thing by feeding the chipmunks and the squirrels because many people do not want them around. Right. Yeah, they're afraid they're going to we, We've talked about this in the program as well as we've done a couple of videos on this on our Website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com. Don't let the name fool you. As well as on our YouTube channel, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, where we go through, uh, over the winter, we go through the old seeds, like we talked about in segment one, that are very old, that we know there's no chance that they're going to germinate, or we've done a germination test on them, and they're poor in the percentile of germination. So we put them in a big jar and we save them and put them in bird feeders in the spring. Now we, we have pumpkin seeds all the way to lettuce seeds to turnip seeds. We have a variety of seeds. All of these seeds can be introduced into your bird feeder or squirrel feeder or whatever, as long as they're not treated. Many of the garden seeds that you'll purchase um, around the country will not have a coating on them. Some seeds are coated with a clay substance around them and then also painted for visibility purposes whenever you plant them in the ground. Others are treated with a yellowish powder, which is an insecticide, I believe it is, of some sort. I know the big farmers have it. It's a chemical that they use uh, on the seed to keep it from being eaten. However, uh, turkeys and birds will go in and eat those seeds because the volume of seeds in which those animals have to ingest before they become sick or die is very, very large. So um, it, it, as long as the seeds are just normal, natural seeds, you're totally fine. Not going to hurt at all to uh, utilize them in the garden. Uh, what's our next question here? So they want to know, is it good to take the old, not diseased plant stalks and leaves and compost that in the soil? They have clay soil and it helps. They feel that it would help break it up, and in the spring the worms would eat it or come find it. Is that good? 
Um, they don't use the root of plants. Love your show, Linda. Well, you can certainly do that. You can take the non-disease plants and uh, and leaves and compost and, and work them in the soil uh, to break up that clay. Now, clay soil, people think clay soil is horrible and non uh, valuable. However, clay soil contains a tremendous amount of nutrients, but it's so bound up that it doesn't release it. And it, you know, if you can amend the soil, whether through compost, through shredded leaves, through regular leaves, through plant debris such as this, and break those particles up, then it releases and it and allows it to be usable in a usable form for the springtime. But yeah, you can certainly use the non-disease plants and stalks and leaves and, and the compost uh, and, and compost them in the soil. Uh, there's a variety of different ways, obviously, and maybe it's not obvious. Uh, we'll, we'll tell how it is. When you compost anything, whether it's paper, whether it's leaves, whether it's plant debris, the smaller the particle, the faster it will break down and the more surface area that is created. That way in the spring, you're not, uh, or next summer or whatever, you're not dealing with large chunks of particles in the soil, but it, it, the microbial life, the worms and, and all the creepy crawly things that we don't see because they're so microscopic, um, will have already utilized and broke these things down. Yeah, if you throw a bunch of leaves on the ground like we do, uh, they will break down. However, it takes a very long time, takes six, eight months in order for them to biodegrade versus if they were in a very small particle size uh, in that. So, yeah, you can do that. Now, other people will, while we're talking about amending soil, Holly, uh, there's kind of two rules of thought. One is throw it on top or or fork it in, and the other is... Um, take and cover the garden with it and then till it in. It, and it's, there's some science, there's science behind the, the, the detrimental, uh, that tilling can do to the soil life, the soil web, uh, but some people choose to go that route. Right. And what it'll do, like you said, it'll, it'll tear up the soil web. Um, it can also increase weeds. Right, you're bringing weeds you're gonna, up. Yeah, yeah you're going to um, increase weed seeds. So there are some disadvantages. To, but some people to till. find some people till every week, and they have every year. It, well, they, some people till every week for weed control between the rows. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the and and there's not. I mean, we don't choose to do that. However, many people do, and they find great success. Is it is it scientifically proven that that they're they're horrible gardeners? No, no. But, but I think it's also just what your used to what you've been doing, what you've done, and maybe you just don't want to, to try to grow a different way or uh, maintain your soil a different way. Right. Um, and maybe there, you know, we'll talk about it um, in future episodes next year about how we can do get more out of the garden with less work. And so that's kind of what we look at. Uh, time for one more question here. I've got some rhubarb that is dying back. When is the correct time to divide it, replant it, how often, how do I do it? Sure. So what you want to do is you want to do this in the early spring as soon as you can You can reach into that soil. So once it's thawed, basically. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to reach down to the crown and you're going to be able to feel the, the different crowns. Mm -hmm. And then you just separate it that way. Because if you don't separate it, basically chokes it th choke itself out. Right, it, it, it does kind of choke and itself And we, out. we've seen this, we grow it in containers because something about, and, and still haven't figured this out after 12 years of gardening at, at uh, Holly's mom, something terrible happened years ago with rhubarb in the ground. We don't know, I've not been told. <laughs> no rhubarb. No rhubarb no, in the ground. No. So we converted, well, we, 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 we started it that. from seed and grew it in large containers. And we've got multiple videos on that, but... I don't know what has happened or what happened or who got hurt by, you know, attacking rhubarb. I don't know. Uh, but we grow it in the containers and we will have to divide it because it's been about th four years now. And, uh, that's about the time frame in which you want to start dividing your rhubarb. Um, and rhubarb is a phenomenal plant. If you like it, it's very prolific. Right. So you want to divide it. You're going to be able to feel those root bulbs and that's how you want to divide it. You want to be able to kind of feel each separate root bulb and then you want to take them apart. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.